Hey guys, so I'm Dr. Joshua Fernandez and I have completed two weeks of residency so far. I'm a neurology resident at UC Riverside, California. And yeah, I'm wearing gloves because I just actually finished a, a workout. We actually have a little gym here. So this is like my what I do during my lunch breaks. So before I get to these lunch breaks, there's a lot of things I have to do beforehand. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit today about you know the experience of residency and what to expect once uh, you get there. So residency, walking into residency, obviously I was scared as hell. I had no confidence in my ability to treat a patient, let alone try to figure out diagnosis, try to figure out the treatment plan, and that's okay. No one does. No one expects you to know anything once you start residency. Like it's, it's a huge learning curve. You're coming from being a medical student where you kind of just, you get all the choices run in front of you, A, B, C, D, and now you're in residency and you're supposed to be expected to know A, B, C on your own. Like that's, I'm still like looking for a lifeline. I'm gonna phone a friend or you know, do 50-50 once I'm talking to the patient. It doesn't work that way and it's scary. So there's nothing you can do to really to prepare for residency except pretty much just getting your mindset you know, prepared for the fact that you're gonna be facing different challenges every day. You're not gonna remember everything. You're gonna look silly and that's totally normal. So the first thing I wanna talk about, I made a little notepad here. Oh, we also get a work phone. Isn't that so cool? Like I get my own phone. It's almost like they're paying me to like work for them, but then like I'm not getting paid because it's like less than minimum wage. We'll get to that. Anyways, workload and responsibility. Maybe just get to it. You get help, but it's very frustrating, especially when you first start. Like that workload is just so different from being a med student. Med student, you're kind of just like a fly on the wall. You're kind of watching. But then when you become, when you go into residency, like you're expected to do work. Like the attendee will tell you to do things and you just have to do it. And they expect you, they expect you to ask questions, but you've got to get it done. And that's a, that was a huge shock for me trying to like, you know, navigate through the entire, you know, brand new system. And that's another thing too, like you're learning a new system. If there's Epic, there's Meditech. I'm in Meditech, so it's like I'm playing Super Nintendo from like 1985 trying to put these patients' orders in. Like this guy's having transfusion, I'm like trying to press B and all I see is Mario jumping up. Isn't that sad? We have all this money, but we can't get like, you know, proper technology to put input patient uh, information faster. It's ridiculous. So. You know, the thing is, you know, one of the things that we talk about is, you know, like the pressure. So depending on what residency program you're in or what specialty, there's a need for hierarchy in terms of acuity. You know, there's discharges, at least in my hospital, we have to get them done by 11 a.m. So that takes priority. Then we'll go into uh, patients that, you know, need, um, you know, to be watched, you know, specific care for that day. Like we really have to monitor the fluids. We have to, you know, monitor, you know, the procedures or MPO, which means like, you know, they can't eat because they're gonna have surgery. So there's like a, a hierarchy in terms of what's important. And so you have to be able to have a notepad or some notes of your patients that you have. And then also of the patients you have, write down what's important, who's the most important, what's most important and then who do you have to talk to so there's there's a large large list and again you get used to it the more you go i had great residents senior residents who and chiefs who were just walking me through it they know i was stupid they were just like god this guy doesn't know anything but it's okay we're gonna guide you and that's that's a good feeling to have hopefully you guys have that experience you know in your residency where uh, the chiefs and the seniors are really nice to you if not that's a huge learning curve and that's gonna suck so, you know, so again, like know the hierarchy, be prepared to, you know, practice that and understand why it's important. And that's another thing new, ask why. It's okay to ask why. There's, I didn't really understand the full like diabetes, you know, uh, sliding scale, the lances for the bolus and like the short term acting like per, uh, per meal. And then there's like, a, there's like a math problem to it. You can like do it real fast by calculating like the, pay, or seeing the patient's kilograms divided by half and then you split that by half again, you'll get to it. But, once you start asking questions, they'll, they'll answer for you. If they're good residents, obviously, if they're good chiefs, they will help you out. So it's okay to ask questions. There's no stupid question. The stupid question is the one that you didn't ask. I actually stole that from one of my seniors, actually. So I will give credit to Lily for that. Uh, the next thing is, God, the, the work schedule, man. You're just not used to waking up at 5.30 every morning for 14 straight days. It's, it's hard, even on your days off. You, you catch yourself waking up early when you didn't want to. And that sucks. Like, God, I wanted to sleep in today, but my body's like, nope, it's time to get up. 
and that takes a, a little bit to get used to. And then for me, you know, I have two kids and you know, I, I need to get my workouts in. I gotta get my gains in, you know, so I'm a, a fit doctor. So you guys can, you know, patients will actually listen to me. I can't tell a patient to be healthy and then they look at their doctor. I'm like, this guy hasn't ran a lap in his entire life. And he wants me to run? Absolutely not. So I get that. Take care of yourself. Okay, so in this time, as you're trying to adjust to, you know, waking up early and this workload, you have to find time to take care of yourself and understand that mental health is important. Taking time of breaks, taking like me, I take my breaks here at the gym. You have to understand that you need that and that's okay. So don't be afraid to do that when you go home, relax, go in a dark, quiet room, watch YouTube, stretch, get on the bike. You know, I do my workouts at night because that relaxes me. It helps me go to sleep. So. You have to find out what's important to you. Also, obviously my kids I and mean, my wife, okay, I'm not gonna just like ignore that, right? So also you gotta go home and you know review some of the things that you didn't understand. And that's really good too, because the next day, you know, you don't look silly asking the same question twice. You wanna try to avoid asking the questions over and over again. You wanna be able to show that you're proactive and that you are capable of looking for the answers yourself and you can figure uh, things out on your feet. You can go home, you figure out, come home, or you come back to work the next day and you present or you tell your, uh, your, your senior or your attendee something you learned today by the new patient you have, they're like, oh wow, you really learned yesterday. And it's like, yeah, exactly, I did. So that looks really good. Don't, don't ask the same question multiple times. Maybe twice is okay because you try and get used to it, but don't do it multiple times. Next, rounding. Rounding is so, it can be nervous wracking, okay? Because you're presenting to the, with a team, you're presenting to the attendee, and my biggest advice, get to the point. Unless it's a brand new attendee, and like for our program, we kind of got stuck in a weird schedule where we have like a new attendee every like three days, so I kind of have to give the past medical history kind of again, but try to be quick with it. You know, get to the point, why they're here, what was wrong, what was done, you know, prior to the days that led up to you presenting to your attendee, and then once you get that, you can just talk about your action and plan. Obviously, don't forget, you know, they're subjective, then talk about physical exam, then talk about labs, then talk about vitals, then talk about imaging. You know, you go through the uh, list and then you go through your action plan. And then, you know, most attendees are by the book, you know, they're still old school. So you gotta, you know, hit all your points and then it's easy to follow too. And then your team can follow if you need help. They know what's going on and then you know what's going on because you're organized. So that helps really a lot. Um, there's a lot of information patients give you. You gotta be able to filter that. Sometimes they just give you a bunch of crap that is just not important. And you're trying to find out why they're here and what needs to be done and what, uh, what procedures need to put in, what consoles need to try to get to the point. Try to find their chief complaint. That's the most important thing and you know, like I said, there's not a lot you could do before you start residency, but if you could go over like, you know, your HPI and try to figure out like your your system of things, it will really help a lot. And that was something I had to catch up on, but after a week I figured it out because I didn't want to look stupid anymore. So get to the uh, necessary points and, you know, try to see what's important for the hospital, especially if you're inpatient. And then, you know, the things that aren't so vital or, you know, dire, you can send them out to uh, your their primary care. They could do that at the outpatient. And lastly, I made a list for this. Be kind to yourself. You are going to look and feel stupid and that is okay. You're the intern. You don't know shit. You're the new guy on the block. New girl on the block. You have no idea what you're doing. Everyone knows that. So don't put extra pressure on yourself. So I say here, you won't know everything. You will forget things. You will ask for a lot of help. You will look absolutely silly. You will get lost in the hospital. I got lost. I didn't know what the ER was. I went through like multiple rooms and finally the pharmacist like saw me pass by three times. She's like, sweetie, are you lost? I'm like, yeah, I'm lost. And she's like, it's okay, come here. And she's like, you're a doctor? I'm like, fuck. I was like, now she knows I'm a doctor. I'm lost. I can't even find, you know, my way to a patient. She's like, uh, good luck. Uh, by the way, I'm the pharmacist that you're gonna be working with. So I'll be double checking your work. So it's clearly <laughs> a little crazy up there. Um, but no, seriously. It's okay to get lost. It's like these hospitals are huge, and sometimes the directions, it's literally like parking in LA, where it's like, you know, park only Monday through Sunday, but don't park Monday through Sunday, and only park from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m., but you're not allowed to park from 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. Does that make sense? It's just like all these, these are just contra, you know, contradicting themselves. That's literally the hospital, and that's gonna be the norm, and you'll get used to it, and you'll have your own roadmap. So don't feel embarrassed, like I said, to ask for help. Uh, the other thing is you will forget your patient's names. It's so common that you're, you're thinking so many things. You don't want to be embarrassed. You're trying to, you know, you think you're a doctor. I mean, you are a doctor, but are you really a doctor? Like you're, you're a baby doctor. You're trying to figure things out. 
and you're there and you're like, you know, go up to the patient all of a sudden like, you're responsible for this patient. This patient's like looking, it's like, this kid literally just got out of like middle, middle school and he's asking me how I feel. It's really daunting. And you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm an adult. You know, I can, I can do this. You know, um, if you need anything, I'm here for you. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to call the doctor. Thanks, kid. Yeah, it, it feels like that. So it's okay. Try to be kind to yourself. And, you know, there's going to there's gonna be moments where you just are going to forget. And that's okay. And the last thing is, you know, when you're rounding bedside with everyone, with the attendees or attendees, you know, multiple ones, and then other, stu and other medical students. Now you're the resident and there's other medical students there. That's, that's daunting. You don't want to look stupid in front of a med student. You're like, oh my God, like, and of course, you know, that's no fair. Med students are the smartest after like step one and step two. After step two, I literally just turned into like an average citizen. I don't know shit. I forgot everything. I don't even know what a mitochondria is. I, beats me. I'm going to phone a friend. The point is, it's going to be okay. You're going to survive. And this has been the best time of my life. It has been so fun. It, I've met so many new people, everyone from so many different cultures. You actually, and then you, I know these patients are here because they're sick, but they're, they're sweet people. You know, they're here because they trust you. And so it's your job to be sweet and understand to them. They're going to yell at you and that's okay. And you have to just take it with a grain of salt and understand where they're coming from and understand that they're scared and they're hurting and they're nervous and they have no idea what's going on, but you do you know what's going on and you're gonna hold them by the hand and you're gonna take them out that front door because you're gonna get everything cured, you're gonna get everything handled. And let's say you can't do everything for the patient. You're gonna make them feel good. You're going to remind them that everything's gonna be okay and life goes on. And you're gonna be a better person because of that. So. I have an Instagram, if you guys wanna hit me up there, maybe uh, I think Match a Resident will post it on for me, but overall, you guys are going to have a great time. Residency is a lot of funding. It's a huge learning curve. And medical student to doctor. That's awesome. That's, that's a huge job. You work so hard to get here. Just put your heads down, study hard, and everything will work itself out. But it's always a pleasure uh, helping match a resident in all the IMGs. So good luck to everybody. And best wishes for match 2024. All right, bye.